As I've been going through my daily devotions in Esther, it caused me to focus on the many difficulties we each face on a day-to-day -day basis, along with the anxiety and the stress that they bring, as we try to find some peace in the midst of all of this calamity. But before we dive in, I would ask you to join me in a prayer for our great nation. Lord, you give us freedom, and we are thankful. But help us all, from the heights of power to the average citizen, to understand what you mean by freedom. Real freedom relies on you, Lord. It's freedom to love and serve others. And today we pray for those who lead in your church. We ask that you would encourage them through your indwelling spirit and help them to see that you honor those who carry others' burdens and that you care for those who shepherd your people. Renew them with your faithfulness and hope. And dear Creator, help us trust you so that we can find new strength, so that we can soar high on wings like eagles, so we can run and not grow weary, watched and in and love for you. You're the only one who brings peace. Shared interests and trade agreements do not. Peace is the unifying power of your love poured into us so we can share it with others. Give us peace, Father, bring, beginning with our friendships with you. May our leaders manage their time well. Protect them from senseless infighting and political posturing that derails forward momentum. May they be surprised by how much they accomplished today. Thank you for the many good gifts you've given to us. You are rich in generosity. You are lavish in your love. We do not deserve what you've given us, and we thank you for your generous mercy and grace, given through your son's sacrifice. And Lord, if victory depends on having many advisors, surround our senior government off officials with many advisors and with the right advisors, surround them with men and women whose wisdom runs deep and whose love for you runs ever deeper. And we pray that as they deliberate on a new Supreme Court justice, that you would be in the midst of all of that. For we pray this all in the powerful name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, today's scripture is found in the book of Esther, chapter 4, verse 14. And I encourage you, as always, to follow along in your Bible. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version today. So let's hear the word of God. Then Mordecai told them to reply to Esther. Do not think of yourself that in the king's palace you will escape any more than any of the other Jews. For if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place, but you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Well, I have titled today's message, Such a Time as This. The book of Esther is interesting on many levels and not the least of which is the fact that God is never mentioned. Now, his presence is obvious, but unlike so many other Old Testament books, we don't find him giving Esther or any of the other key figures in her story direction. No burning bush, no angelic appearance. All we notice is Esther's trust in prayer and fasting before Yahweh. This is the truth that has resonated with me recently, as I find myself asking the same questions I imagine Esther might have asked. How did I ever get into this situation? Why am I in this situation? What should I be doing about it? Now, I feel quite confident that most of you have asked the same sort of questions as well, perhaps many times. And like me, you may be asking them now because of your present situation. How do I decide what to do next? 
how will I get myself out of this one? Now, as we ask these questions, the anxiety and stress can rise. So what does scripture have to say about it? As, as we ask, let's not forget one very important fact. If we make a bad decision, God has promised he will be there with us. If we make a good decision, God has promised he will be there with us. See, the bottom line here is God has promised to be with us through it all, good and bad. So, okay, let's talk a little bit about anxiety and stress. Let's begin with dictionary.com as it defines anxiety. Distress or uneasiness of mind caused by fear of danger or misfortune. And then stress is defined as to experience worry. So having those definitions, I believe we need to investigate what Scripture has to say, because that's where we are promised that peace beyond our understanding. Now, in the Help Finder Bible, I found the following. Pressures in our lives can build and pull us in different directions. These pressures pull against our sense of well-being, and anxiety begins to overwhelm us. Trying to do too much work with too little time or too few resources can stretch us beyond our capacity. Trying to cope with the financial demands of life without adequate income can make us begin to feel desperate. And finding yourself in a brand new environment without access to a support network can cause great stress. Life sometimes causes us to feel like a rubber band stretched too tight. Pressures build up and pull us in different directions or pull against our sense of well-being. Trying to live in today's society with its many demands and ongoing changes can put excessive stress on us, especially in our present international situation with all of its many restrictions and fears. Dealing with the tension caused by a fear of sickness and death can cause anxiety and great stress. What's right to do? How can I not offend others? Marital difficulties, difficulties in parent-child relationships, or any work relational difficulties can bring stress into life. We need a perspective that comes only from God. <clears throat> This all causes me to ask, should we be surprised by the anxiety we experience in life? The Gospel of John, chapter 16, verse 33, shows us God's perspective. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. See, Jesus warned us to expect stress and trouble in this life. This world is filled with trials and sorrows that generate deep-seated anxiety. And the key to dealing with anxiety is not to be surprised when it comes, but to learn how to respond when it does come, and it will come. We must never neglect the spiritual help the Holy Spirit promises to provide to every believer whenever we ask. Well, at all, all of that having been said, uh, let's investigate some causes of stress and anxiety that we find in Scripture. That we know that this is nothing new. Let's begin in Genesis 3, verse, verses 6 and 23. So she, Eve, took some fruit and ate it. And then she gave some to her husband, and he ate it too. So the Lord God banished them from the Garden of Eden. A little stress there. How about Genesis 44, verse 18? Then Judah stepped forward and said, Please, my Lord, let your servant say just one word to you. Please do not be angry with me, even though you are as powerful as Pharaoh himself. See, we have all probably heard someone use this phrase. I made my bed. Now I guess I have to lie in it. 
this person is recognizing that uncomfortable or stressful situations are often the product of our own unwise decisions or sinful behavior. See, Joseph's brothers were facing this problem. Years earlier, they had decided to eliminate their irritating brother by selling him. Far more suffering and stress than Joseph had ever caused them. Sometimes the stress in our lives is of our own making, the result of an unhealthy lifestyle or decision. And speaking of bad decisions and their consequences, listen to what is recorded in 2 Samuel 11 and 12. Then King David sent messengers to get her, Bathsheba. And when she came to the palace, he slept with her. Nathan replied, the Lord has forgiven you, and you won't die for this sin. Nevertheless, your child will die. And then there is Luke 22. Finally, she said, this man was one of Jesus' followers. But Peter denied it. Woman, he said, I don't even know him. At that moment, the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter left the courtyard, weeping bitterly. See, anxiety can have roots in things we have done in the past. Anxiety can build when we fail to trust God for help. When pressures come our, come our way, we need to resist the temptation to look for an easy way out or to complain to those around us. Instead, we need to focus on God's power and wisdom to help us deal with the situation at hand. In James 1, verses 2 through 4, Jesus' brother gives us some great advice. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Adversity and the normal problems of life cause anxiety and stress. Sometimes anxiety is the result of wounds from the past that we that were not our fault. Sometimes laziness and poor planning can lead to anxiety. Making mistakes can lead to anxiety in our lives and in the lives of our friends. Working against the clock, especially on an ongoing basis, can cause deep anxiety. I just never have enough time for all the things I have to do. That's why God put in place the Sabbath, that we should rest from our labors. But let's look at what some of the dangers of all this anxiety can be. In Numbers 11, verses 10 through 14, we're told, Moses heard all the families standing by the doorways of their tents whining. And the Lord became extremely angry. Moses was also very aggravated. And Moses said to the Lord, Why are you treating me, your servants, so harshly? Have mercy on me. What did I do to deserve the burden of all these people? I can't carry all these people by myself. The load is far too heavy. Then the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 1 verse 18 shares, we think you ought to know, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through in the province of Asia. We were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure, and we thought we would never live through it. See, the intense demands of life can have potential to overwhelm us. The expectations, the criticism, and the scope of needs and responsibilities can threaten to crush even the strongest person. Paul is laying it out there for us. Anxiety can cause us to focus on the trivial and as pressures squeeze our perspective inward, we lose the big picture. Preoccupation with the issues of the moment can sometimes blind us to what's really important. Listen to what's recorded in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 40 and 41. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. 
But the Lord said to her, My dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. Sometimes we can't see the forest because we're focusing on the tree. Is there anything we can do when we're overwhelmed by anxiety? Well, Paul gives us some hope again in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 9. We are hunted down but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Then in Psalm 55, verse 22, we're given even more sound advice. Give your burdens to the Lord and he will take care of you. He will not permit the godly to slip and fall. Knowing that God is by our side during times of anxiety will help us to keep from giving up. At the point when we feel that life is unbearable, the Lord steps beside us and lifts our load. God's help gives us hope in the midst of stress and anxiety. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my... 10. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress where I will never be shaken. Psalm 62, 2. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and also trust in me. Jesus said those very words. John 14, 1. Since he himself has gone through suffering and testing, he is able to help us when we are being tested. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. Philippians 2, 4. But in my distress, I cried out to the Lord, and he heard me from his sanctuary. My cry reached his ears. Samuel, 2 Samuel 22, 7. What an amazing promise. My cry reached his ears. He heard me. The first step in dealing with our anxiety is to bring it to the Lord. Only he brings true peace of heart and mind. And God's availability and promises provide effective stress reducers. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verse 31 records, Then Jesus said, Let's go by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles didn't even have time to eat. See, be persistent in taking time in prayer. We're counseled by Paul in 2 Corinthians 6, verses 19 and 20. Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price. So you must honor God with your body. Then in his letter to the Galatians, chapter 6, verse 9, so let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessings if we don't give up. Take time to slow down and take a break from pressure-packed situations. Take care of your body. Adequate rest, regular exercise, and proper nutrition they are also essential to dealing effectively with stress and anxiety. But we cannot let stress and anxiety defeat us. When we are tired of doing good, it may be because we are just too tired. Get some rest. This raises another question. Should we rely strictly on our own strength alone? Solomon gives a warning in Proverbs 12, verse 15. Fools think their own way is right, but the wise listen to others. See, when we think we know it all, we probably know less than we think. If in humility we recognize how much help and counsel we truly need, we will likely seek it and get it. We all enjoy sharing wisdom with the wise, and when we do, we discover new wisdom for our own needs. Wisdom is the recognition of our own inadequacies. Foolishness is thinking we can handle all our problems on our own. It's wise to be aware of our tendency to become overcome by anxiety and be prepared to deal with them. 
This involves building supportive relationships that can bring us help when we become overwhelmed. Timely advice is lovely, like golden apples in a silver basket. That's what we're told in Proverbs 25, 11. See, there are few things as valuable as wise and timely counsel. Sometimes the presence and help of a friend is just what we need. And God doesn't seem to be anywhere around. King David writes in Psalm 71, verse 5, O Lord, you alone are my hope. And in Hebrews 11, verse 1, we hear, Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It's the evidence of things we cannot see. So we might ask, who but God controls the future? Who but God has a home for us that is eternal? Who but God forgives our sins? Who but God can give us a life that lasts forever? See, when we have faith in God to do what he has promised, we can be absolutely sure that he will. Our hopes are built on the solid foundation of God's trustworthiness. Remember, if we make a bad decision, God has promised he will be with there with us. If we make a good decision, God has promised he will be there with us. See, our bottom line is just this. God has promised to be with us through it all, the good and the bad. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope, Jeremiah 29, 11. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world, John 16, 33. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you, 1 Peter 5, 7. Amen. As our benediction, let's hear some wisdom from Psalm 37. Do not be agitated by evildoers. Trust in the Lord and do what is good. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. The Lord watches over the blameless all their days and their inheritance will last forever. A man's steps are established by the Lord, and he takes pleasure in his way. Turn away from evil and do what is good. Wait for the Lord and keep his way. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord, their refuge in a time of distress. And the Lord helps and delivers them. He will deliver them from the wicked, and he will save them because they take refuge in him. Dear ones, take refuge in the Lord. Seek good counsel. Be in prayer. And truly you will have the peace that goes beyond understanding. Good decision, bad decision, God is with each and every believer. And his Holy Spirit will strengthen you through any situation. And that should keep our anxiety levels low, that we might have less stress as we deal with all the difficulties this world hands to us. Well, I thank you for joining me again, and I pray that your week will be filled with the wonder of God, his grace and his peace should overcome you. And Father God, I lift up all those who need you. I lift up those who are sick for healing. I lift up those who are struggling with financial difficulties for relief. I lift up everyone who chooses your son that they might receive his peace in the midst of this storm called life. Amen and amen. Hope to see you next week. God bless you.